Hi there, welcome to this build of the Ion. Now, this is a futuristic looking flying wing designed by Peter Fisher in 1957. And we're building this from a great set of plans which I got from Derek Scott. And you can see the plans on the wall behind me. Lots of information and there were instructions and the, um, the balsa printed wood as well that, that came, or the images of it, that came with the plans. And if you have a look in the description below, you'll see a link to Derek's uh, website where you can get a copy of these plans at a really reasonable price. Great service as well. Now, you can see looking at this ion, we're almost there now. There's very little to do uh, before we start thinking about covering it. In the last video, we got the Elevon servos installed and the Elevons hinged. And it's, it's really starting to take shape. Now, in this video, which is probably one of the last building jobs, except for a few tweaks here and there, we need to start thinking about this underside here because we've got a fuel tank here and we're going to need access to that and we're going to install the radio gear here. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video and it's going to be really good because like I say once we've done that we're more or less done with the actual balsa construction of this model. So we'll take a closer look at what I'm hoping to get done in this video. Now as I said in the last video we got these 3.7 gram servos installed in the wings and operating the elevons and the cables for those are going to come along these uh, rolled plastic tubes and into this central section of the fuselage here and I think it's worth having a look at the equipment the the radio equipment that I want to install in the fuselage here and I'm trying to keep this as light as possible and so like I say we'll have a quick look now I fly Flysky and this is one of their light receivers and I think this is about 5 grams, 7 grams and then we've got a few variations on batteries that I could use. I'm trying to keep the weight as small as possible. Now this is a 100 milliamp hour battery which weighs what 3 grams. Now I can get 10 minute flights with this and I've got a number of these so I could just replace it every time I want to have a flight and that would work fine. If I want I've got a, a slightly larger battery here 220 milliamp hours. These are all both, well, both single cells and this is what 5 grams. Now the battery I use is going to depend a little bit on the CG of this model. If I need more weight to come back or to go forward to get this balanced then I might vary the battery I use finally in the model just so that we don't add lead we add battery which is useful so the bigger the battery obviously the the better it is but we want to keep the weight down and I've also got this battery here which is 30 grams and this is what 300 milliamp hour it's um, nickel metal hydride now if I'm hoping to use this battery to be honest so that and the radio is what 12 grams couple of servos we're talking of radio equipment less than uh, than than 20 grams so that would be great and uh, what I'll do now is I'll move the uh, the fuselage closer to us and we'll have a look at where we're planning to put this like I say it's very light equipment but we'll increase the size of the battery as we need to to uh, to get this model to balance correctly so with the fuselage as I said earlier we've got the fuel tank here and so I want to make an access hatch to get into that it's not something I envisage getting into very often but I don't want to have to cut a hole in the model if I need to change the the fuel pipes for example the the hose so I'm going to make it just a small hatch here that comes off and I'll probably just have a single um, hex head bolt domed head bolt that will screw that down so I'll put a bit of sheeting across here across here and then we need to think about how the tissue and the laminating film which I'm going to use to cover this model is going to finish and attach to this edge so I will put a thin strip of balsa down there 
to widen that up so we've got a fixing point. Same also down the side of this rib here, this central rib, just to provide a fixing point. Because if we don't, the tissue and the laminating foil would just pull off a piece of balsa that narrow. So that's quite an easy job, I think. And I'm going to put in some shear webbing on these spars here. It was something I left undone when I did the shear webbing on the other sections. I just wasn't sure how it was going to work with access. And particularly if I do this, and I'm going to fuel proof inside there so that if we have a leak from there, hopefully it won't come back into the radio equipment. Now, the radio equipment I'm going to put here. I'm going to make a, a small hatch on this side of the fuselage. So I'm going to bring a piece of balsa down here, which will provide a fixing point for the tissue and the film so it doesn't pull off. So this bit will be totally covered. Now you can see I've changed the plastic. If you've seen the previous videos, you'll know that this plastic tube finished about here. And actually I've replaced it. I've um, taken it out and put in a longer tube and I've cut a section out of this central rib here. And if I turn that around, you can see that may be better there. Uh, I just wanted to be able to get the cable from the servo to this central section here. Now I've cut that out and weakened it a little bit, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it out a little bit more so I can slot this down and it's gonna make a grab point for um, launching the model because there's nothing to grip this model underneath and that will make it a lot easier to launch. So I'm gonna cut that out, set that down and I'm going to do a couple of pieces of one mil ply either side to give that a little bit more strength. Now with this wheel, it's not gonna make contact with the ground, so it, I'm not worried about it breaking off in impact, but it needs to be solid enough that we can hold this model to launch it sort of over our head. I'm gonna make a hatch here, so I'm gonna make this area a little bit more smaller and bits of balsa to finish the tissue on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get on with that now, and I'll probably do this first section first, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at how we're getting on. Right, well, I've been cracking on with this now and I thought it was about time for an update. So if we look at the first section here where we've got the fuel tank that goes in, if I can find the fuel tank, here it is. So plenty of room there for the fuel tank to slot into that gap and we can put, pack some foam around it. But I haven't glued in these two pieces yet because I want to take those out and uh, that will give me more access for the fuel proofing. So I'll leave those out. Done the side pieces, they're glued in, ready for the tissue to finish and the film. And I've also done the, uh, the shear webbing there. And as with this, the grain needs to go uh, vertically or between the spars, not horizontally. So that will add quite a lot of strength to the wing that was missing. Now, I've got the... Um, if I turn that, which is the best way, if I turn that that way, we can see I've got this uh, pinch here to help uh, hold it when I'm launching it. Now, I've put in this piece of balsa because the tissue is gonna come and the film to here and it's gonna finish on that edge. Still haven't glued that in yet. I will do that in a bit. And I've got this pinch piece, which I've got balsa, I think that's uh, 330 seconds, so is that 330 seconds? No, sort of one eighth. So that's uh, 3.2 mil. And I put that on a piece of one mil plywood. And that just slots down into there and gives that quite a bit of strength. I, I didn't say earlier, but the CG on this is round about here. So it's just slightly forward of the CG. So if we've got the engine running and we hold it just slightly forward, that should be enough to keep the nose down or, or level and, and launch it by hand. And I'll be putting on some um, uh, uh, sandpaper or um, wet and dry paper, really coarse, to, to give a grip. Now, I did make another piece of one mil ply to go on that side as well, but I'm not sure if that 
is a little bit of overkill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this central piece done and I'll get this um, finished and then I'll have a think about whether that's really needed. I'll, I'll, I'll have a feel how it feels in the hand. And um, so now, fuel proofing, glue that, I'm going to then start to think about getting the hatch done and boxing off this ready for a hatch there. Right, I thought it was worth just showing you how I'm going to do the hatch for here. But before I get to that, I'll just say I've got this pinch piece finished now and uh, this bit of uh, attachment for the, the covering glued in. And I did, it, it still needs sanding just to neaten it up a bit, but I did go with the one mil ply either side. With just the one on, it just wiggled a bit it, and, and it seemed like it was gonna break. So I've done that and that feels really secure now. And I think when we're launching that, that will be a, a, a great help. So back to this, I've got that fuel proofed in there now and I've got the piece of balsa that is going to go at this far end like that. Let me just zoom in a little bit. There we go. Right, I've got this piece of balsa that's going to go in that far end there and what I've done is I've put on a piece of one mil ply just in there and then I've put some thicker balsa on the underside just so that this captive nut can be pulled into that and so once that's in there we can use this uh, cover which is just a piece of 116 balsa with a strengthening piece on the bottom and I've put um, CA on this actually I'm using CA for all of this but I've put CA on the top here just to harden it a little bit and that will now screw down into there and if I take that out we can see that will just screw in and we just have to be careful when I'm doing this that we don't over tighten it and pull it through the um, pull it through the balsa because it is only soft balsa. Now to get this the correct fit what I did was I put this cross piece on and then I sanded it down until it was a nice uh, fit with this, so the same height as that. It was a little bit proud because it was 116 and um, and there, that's fine now. So I'm going to do a similar process with the other end because to I've got this bit of balsa that goes in here like that and I'm going to make a tongue on this that hooks underneath. So it'll hook underneath and then screw down into place. Now on the underside of this, just to provide a little bit of strength, I put some one mil plywood. And when that's in there, now that will be a lot stronger for this tongue. So I'm going to do a similar process now. I'm going to put on a piece of balsa. I think this is one eighth and then I will put on a tongue, a piece of one mil ply and that will just hook under like that and actually that is a pretty good fit I think if not I would check, sand this and then put the, uh, the, the plywood on but I think with that piece of balsa it should work absolutely fine but I just thought I'd show you how I was making this hatch well, I've now got the hatches finished on the underside of this and the, uh, the fuel tank fitted. And you can see there, we've got the, the finished hatches. We've got the one here, which is for the fuel tank. And then we've got another one for the radio. And we've got a breather pipe coming out of here from the fuel tank. And we've put a, a filler pipe here coming out. Now both these pipes uh, are going to be uh, black plastic so they're not going to show up quite as much and I'll, I'll trim this of course. But we'll have a closer look at this now. Okay well first of all we've got the hatch for the radio equipment and as I've said before we've got balsa around the edge so we can secure the covering nicely. And we've just got a simple uh, latch on this to lift that up and I thought I'd make it as easy as possible 
to operate that because I'm not going to have a switch I'm just going to lift that up put the battery in and then close the hatch and so I'll take that off again and we can have a, look, a quick look inside there's just a, a piece of balsa there which is supporting the fuselage and we'll put a bit of foam in there or um, maybe some velcro just to hold the receiver and the battery very small items to go in there now if we have a look at the hatch for the fuel tank this will be kept closed most of the time unless I need to change the hoses and what I am probably do is actually cover over this and then put the screw in so that it's actually nicely sealed and if I want to get in there to change the hoses which isn't going to be very often I'll just take a knife around maybe I, I, I'll see how that goes but if I just undo the um, the bolt and that just lifts out and we've got the foam and uh, and we can see the tank just sitting in there and there's the two pipes on top of there if I just get my forceps I can take that out I might regret suggesting to do this because it'll pull the hoses but and I need to feed this hose down because this hose just doubles back there we go okay so we've got the two hoses the one doubles back and comes out here which is basically going to be a breather come overflow so when I fill the tank excess fuel will come out of there we've then got the, the feed which will go to the engine which goes down and through the bulkhead and then we've got the filler pipe here and I've thread all these through and when it's covered we'll still be able to get access to uh, to all of them and uh, and be able to thread it uh, and having the filler coming out the top I mean I could have brought the filler out the bottom but then when I fill it up it's just going to flood fuel out when it's full onto the model far better I turn it over I fill it up from here and then the excess I can keep an eye underneath until it just flows out the bottom I think that will probably be the best way to keep the model clean and as I said these are going to be black plastic hoses eventually uh, once this is all covered and set up and I'm going to be painting inside of the cockpit black so hopefully this won't show up too much the hose and everything through the windscreen well it is dead exciting to have got this to this stage because essentially the main building work is finished now we've got the elevons and the servos fitted we've got the fin that will eventually go onto the fuselage once it's covered and we've got our end plates done it all needs a really good sand now in preparation for the covering but there are just a couple of little jobs I want to do before I do I, I start that covering I've got the engine and I want to think about a muffler and just getting the engine fitted and making sure that that is all good and uh, that I'm not going to get it covered and find I need to sh or should have done something else so I want to get the engine fitted and, and make sure that's right I've also been thinking about the CG and I want to make sure that we're going to be able to achieve the CG with the radio equipment and the battery and placing that in the right place in those hatches and just checking that this actually all balances out again I don't want to find that I should have done something before I covered it after I've covered it I know the balance of this is going to alter once I get it covered because we've got extra weight of the covering material but I want to get an idea and also rather than balancing this on my fingertips I'm thinking of devising something that will allow me to balance it a lot better a lot more accurately a little bit like I did with my King Combat flying wings where I just made some um, uh, some blocks and some pins to, to balance a wing accurately but anyway I'm going to draw this video to a close now and I hope you've enjoyed it and found it interesting and you, you can see why I'm so excited about the development of this uh, lovely Peter Fisher Ion from the 1950s. So thanks very much for watching and please come back and see how we get on finishing this off.